I'm Dr. Gary Arthur, Laguna Beach, Doctor of Chiropractic, right here since 1987, and also working to finish up my naturopathic degree as well. And today we're going to do lunch with a doc, and thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about healthy kids and back hey, to school. Yes, yeah, is my daughter, Morea. <laughs> she was just going to interview me. We have a lot of families that we treat uh, here in downtown Laguna Beach, mm -hmm. and a lot of people want to know what are some ways to keep kids healthy yeah. and uh, studying well, having good focus and mm -hmm. attention, sleeping well, keeping their immune system strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, go ahead. Yes, so that's what we want to do. I'm going to act as kind of like the parent and asking Dr. Gary questions as if I had a child that um, was going through different things and I wanted to ask for advice. So we're going to give you some really practical steps of things you can do and um, really give your child the best environment and the best starting place where they can really thrive and function well. Um, there's a lot that our kids um, go through these days, so let's get started. Okay, so Dr. Gary, if I came to you as a parent and I said, my child is really struggling with ADD, ADHD, just can't focus can't sit still in class, what should I do? Well, let's, let's think about some of the, the common things that can cause a lack of focus and a, an inflammatory response in the brain. Mm -hmm. One of the most common things has to do with food sensitivities, and there can be many different causes. Some people have food sensitivities that are genetic predispositions, like someone that, that eats a peanut and their throat closes up, mm -hmm. but that's, that's more of the rare process that's an anaphylactic shock and some of those um, types of genetic tendencies and predispositions are so so challenging that they're hard to overcome mm -hmm. but the most common one is one where there's a release of histamine in the system which is an inflammatory chemical in the nervous system and it can really it's it's similar to those of you that are old enough to remember when we used to have antennas on TVs and you probably don't remember this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the idea is that there were um, these rabbit ear um, antennas, and sometimes you would be looking at your TV signal and would have this all this gray spots and all. Static. It was yeah, static. And histamine is very much like that. It, mm. it creates a static in the nervous system where we can't focus as well as we need to. They've, they've even found that oftentimes processing predominantly right brain functions like the art and music and spatial creative relationships versus the left brain which is much more analytical mathematical um, that oftentimes the in the center where the corpus callosum is between the two halves of the brain that that histamine can be an inflammatory process and, and keep the brain from being able to really integrate the information mm -hmm. as well as in, interfere with, with the, the focus and the concentration, the ability to um, focus. So we look at what would be an inflammatory loop in the nervous system, mm -hmm. what are some basic things. There are blood tests that you can determine food sensitivities, there are the, there's the pinprick test that, you know, you basically take a needle and you put little bits of food into the back of a person and it's on a grid and you see what things they're, they're about. That's commonly medical allergy testing. So there's blood testing, there's, um, there's the pinprick test, and there's even the kinesiological uh, testing. Mm -hmm. So the kinesiological is, is much more quick, but each, each of the testing systems has its drawbacks. I would say most of the blood testing is probably considered the most analytical and the most researched where there's an immunoglobulin response when the blood cells are put into the environment of the specific food. Mm -hmm. So okay. each one has its strong points and weak points. Mm -hmm. So boiling that down a little bit for parents, if their kids are struggling with this, it's probably to go get a test to look at what foods they're allergic to that might be causing inflammatory responses yeah, in the brain. Yeah, any, any of the three. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Another thing that I just wanted to mention is something called leaky gut, which is commonly a side effect of having um, antibiotics. Mm. It can 
actually create an environment where there's lots more yeast in the intestinal tract and those yeast can burrow a little hole into the intestinal wall instead of being like the size of a strainer hole it can be like the size of a colander and then food that's completely not completely digested can get into the bloodstream and then we can have that histamine inflammatory response in the bloodstream oh. from eating foods that we may not necessarily be allergic to but they're getting into the bloodstream too early so that's a digestive okay. cause of inflammation throughout the nervous system hmm. so getting that digestion checked out seeing how that's yeah. really and there was a medical allergist dr william philpot that wrote a famous book in 1990 and the book was called brain allergies and he did research finding different ways of um, that's our, our food. I'll get it. You want to get that? Um, different ways of doing testing because he thought to himself that it's it's odd to think that a, a pinprick test would be something that you know you're not going to get exposed to putting the blood in contact with the food immediately. You would usually um, eat it. The saliva would start to digest it. It would go into the stomach. It would have the hydrochloric acid um, to break it down and then the pancreatic enzymes and then it would be digested before it got in the food stream so in the blood bloodstream and um, so dr. Philpot theorized that perhaps there was another way to test it so he used an ohm meter which is um, what they had been doing biofeedback with similar to what a, a lie detector test would be and he put the electrodes onto a person and had the ohm meter that had the little needle that would show if there was electrical response, much like a lie detector test would actually show if there was a, um, is that my guacamole? Yes. So that's the four ouncer? Yep. Wow, okay. Got some fish tacos. That's for you, and there's the guacamole. Perfect. I'm doing I'm doing intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet, so my first mm. meal is a high fat meal. Yep. But what he found with um, these tests is that when he hooked the electrodes up um, and he had them taste certain foods, sometimes the patient would taste a certain food and the needle would go up showing there was an electrical response on the skin receptors. There was a stress response. Um, the problem with that form of testing was that every time he'd had them test the food, if they did go into an anaphylactic reaction, the throat would cl uh, close down and you'd have to give them epinephrine or norepinephrine, um, some sort of adrenaline mechanism that he would have to um, administer uh, an injection to get their inflammatory response to calm down. And by accident, he was testing foods and he found that the vial next to the person with a magnet on it showed as strong as a response almost as when they would test it. It was based on acupuncture meridians and, and testing sequences. So it began to show the electrical, electrical <coughs> response was showing the same as the uh, kinesiological response using muscle testing. Mm. I was extremely skeptical about muscle testing because I didn't really understand it, but that is another way that um, those things can be can be tested. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a few different ways that we can determine if there's a reactivity. Mm. So we got food, reactivity, get that checked. We got, um, you know, some digestive stuff that could be happening, get that checked. Mm -hmm. And then what about doing chiropractic care? There have been studies out that have shown that chiropractic care can help with ADD, ADHD symptoms mm -hmm. and improve, um, you know, the whole nervous system flow and everything like that. Let's see, you, there was a study, the chiropractic care of children with attention deficit um, hyperactivity disorder, a retrospective case study. This was done in... 2010. 2010, and it was uh, through Explore magazine out of New York. And um, what they basically found was that uh, there was a decrease in ADHD um, findings and a questionnaire that patients reported that their ADHD symptoms were diminished. So it says a retrospective case series of ADHD patients under chiropractic care is described and it does provide supporting evidence of the benefits of chiropractic spinal manipulative therapy. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, are you de-stressing the body? If the body is less stressed, whether structurally, chemically, emotionally, electrically, 
any of the decreasing stress mechanisms will help the body to work better. Mm -hmm. There's less stress to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that's really what we're looking at. Yeah. So good. So, okay, there's foods that, um, you know, kids can be allergic to and reactive to. What about just foods in general that are just you want to stay away from for brain health? And then also what foods do we want to incorporate into our diet for better focus and... Um, Everything like that. Radiation. What's the mechanism of a thrill of a roller coaster ride? What is it? What is it that gives you the thrill? Cortisol? No, but what happens to give you the thrill? What are you doing on the rolling up and then woo down? That's what you don't want blood sugar to do. You don't mm. want your blood sugar to go highs and lows. You want it to be maintained very, fairly stably because. If you get a high carbohydrate meal, sugar, high carb breakfast, those kind of things, you're going to have this big spike in your blood glucose, and then insulin is going to re be released because it's not good to have too much sugar in your blood. Insulin is going to be released, and then you're going to decrease the blood sugar, and you're going to go into a hypoglycemia. So you're going to get these surges up and down and up and down mm -hmm. of um, of surges, and that's not good. Cortisol is a stress hormone. That's going to also affect your ability to concentrate and focus. Mm. So that's one thing. Keep your blood sugar in check. Make sure there's protein in every meal. Make sure there's lots of good fats. Coconut oil has been shown to help even people with Alzheimer's and dementia. You can use that um, in your foods. You can make, um, if you watch the movie on Netflix called The Magic Pill, it talks about the ketogenic diet and the benefits of it and how it's helped people with with autism, ADHD, um, by stabilizing the blood sugar, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And you can make treats like called fat bombs, mm -hmm. where we've made those at yep. home. Grind up um, raw cashews, raw almonds, raw walnuts, add in coconut oil, cocoa powder, um, perhaps even some sucanat, which is a great sugar source that doesn't cause your blood sugar to spike up and down called sucanat s-u-c-a-n-a-t mm -hmm. but it's um, just the e evaporated um, sugarcane juice that then has the minerals in it so it doesn't cause these big spikes in your blood sugar mm -hmm. so I would say keeping your sugar to a minimum carbs yeah. to a minimum getting off the the foods that are offensive that are reactive and then also making sure you don't have inflammatory loops by lots of fried foods and lots of um, hydrogenated oils. Mm -hmm. Those cause inflammation as well. Yeah. So a lot of french fries, a lot of deep fried chips and things like that are going to cause inflammatory loops as well. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so those are some really great points for parents that have kids struggling with ADD, ADHD, focus, challenges. So what if I was a parent and I came to you and said, my daughter is just struggling with so much fatigue she wakes up every morning and can barely get out of bed and just says she has no energy throughout the day what could she do well I would go back through those basic things we just talked about mm -hmm. I would also recommend that um, there we got to look at sleep patterns now in Chinese mm -hmm. medicine it says that every hour of sleep before midnight is worth two hours afterwards. So getting to bed earlier is much better. You're going to get far better rest and wake up feeling better. Um, I've noticed with my daughters, sometimes when they've been studying, they stay up really late and then they can hardly get up the next morning. Mm -hmm. So control the blood sugar. Make sure you're not having a lot of sweets before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then try to get to bed a little bit earlier, get your studying done earlier in the day as well. Mm -hmm. And then there are supplements as well that can really help with cognition. We have a product called uh, Cognoquil from Zymogen, and, uh, and that product works really well for focus and memory. There's also um, Effixer, which is um, a similar product, but it has a little bit of green tea, caffeine as well. Um, which some of these can be alternatives to taking Adderall um, as a, a natural alternative to trying some natural things, you know, and if a person is inclined to try natural medicine before using pharmaceutical approach, there are lots of things that um, can be used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Good, so fatigue has to do with sleep, has to do with nutrition, has to do with um, a broad range of stress. Things. Stress. You know, stress of just being a student and having high demands, mm -hmm. that can fatigue the adrenal glands. Sometimes the adrenal glands need a little support, uh -huh. but we usually only try to add supplements in if some of the basic things are being administered. So nobody wants to take a ton of supplements, but so you try to do the basic stuff and then add the supplements as needed. Mm -hmm. That's good. So then my third question is about stress. So we kind of touched on it, but I'm just like, my children are just so stressed out. They don't even know how to handle all the stress that is on them. What are some things that they can do to handle their stress well and to de-stress their system? I have a patient who wasn't able to have her kids be in regular school because they were so uncontrollable they were getting in fights, they were screaming, they could not stay focused. And now this year they're both in school um, after having to homeschool, which is, was a huge stress to her. And we were able to do a combination of some supplementation, change in diet, and we also did neuro-emotional technique, which has been proven at Thomas Jefferson Medical University to decrease the stress response. And that was seen in a, a big research study uh, you can go to net mind body, N E T M I N D body dot com, and you can see a little six minute video on that if you'd like to know more about naturally processing emotional stress. But what they found in the study was that when a person remembered something that was extremely stressful, their their brain on a video MRI lit up with a stress response, cortisol causing increased breathing, tightening of muscles increased heart rate and the stress response in the brain that showed on the MRI hmm. and then after doing uh, neuroemotional technique they did uh, an average of an hour a week over the next four weeks then they put them back in the tube and had them remember the stressful event again and there was no more stress response so now we have clinical um, research data that shows the effectiveness of neuroemotional technique which hmm. is really fascinating because clinically we knew that it helps so, so many people, but now we have the reference research data, which is um, you know really helpful to see the science behind a lot of these things, mm -hmm. to know why they work and how they work. Mm -hmm. And you have a really good breathing technique too for when you're in the middle of stress. Mm -hmm. I think this would be a good tip for um, everybody to show their kids. So, she going breathing. Sure, I'll right. show it. So, well, you're supposed to stand up, but I'm going to get cut off the camera. So basically, you're standing up, and then you're going to kind of have your knees slightly bent, right? And then you're going to just take a deep breath in. In through the nose. And out. Through the mouth. It's called raising the clouds. Nice. You can do that about like three or four times. About four times. It just kind of calms a person, centers them. It's kind of like time out. Let's recalibrate. Mm -hmm. Let's just kind of get real with where we are right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And a Qigong master um, taught that to me. And it's just, uh, the, the best way to do it is you breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and the tongue rests behind the teeth, just barely on the ridge of the uh, roof of your mouth. That's an ancient technique that yogis and Chinese um, practitioners have used for centuries and centuries. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Good, so I think that kind of covers a lot of the things that you know might be obstacles for children to really get the best out of their education and their learning and what are the, you know, the things that parents can do to help their kids get through that and really give them the best environment to see them succeed and that's what we want right our kids are in school we want them to be succeeding flourishing growing learning so um, any last things to add um, you know I think a parent's life is better when kids are better mm -hmm. and if any of you have been having challenges with your kids um, this one was pretty much perfect. So oh. we didn't have much of a challenge with this one. And I love all my kids. And but some are more challenging than others. And some we have to do more work for. Some just 
you know, are born a certain way and have certain challenges that come with the, the package. But um, don't give up hope. There's, um, there's lots of improvement that can be made. And sometimes there's simpler things that aren't, you know, so challenging and so expensive to do. Uh, my wife, Dr. Lisa, is really good with working with kids too. I, I usually like to have her see a lot of the kids and we have, we're doing kind of like an introductory offer, maybe you could tell them. Yes, so we always do a lunch with the doc special, so for any of you joining us, you get to take advantage of that, which is really great. So today we're going to offer um, an appointment with either Dr. Yeri or Dr. Lisa to bring your kid in and um, basically she'll she or he will kind of go through the things that we talked about today, looking at digestion, looking at food intolerance, looking at stress response, and um, giving your kids really what they need. Maybe it's taking a lab test that they might need, maybe it's taking some supplements, maybe it's incorporating some different practices um, into their lifestyle that are going to help them through these things. So if that's something that you want to take advantage of, um, we're doing a $97 special on that. So you can come in, um, get that introductory special, or if you've seen us before, you can come in as well. How long is that um, good That is good until um, the end of this week. So the... 20 Friday, which is the just make it go through October 1st. Okay, Start October 1st. Oh, October sure. 1st. You know, it's the first month of the school year, so this month really counts. You're setting the groundwork, so we're we're offering it, you know, and until even the if end you of can't September. come in until then, if you if you take advantage of a special beforehand, mm -hmm. you can set the appointment up for you know uh, any time in October and, and yep. we'll honor it. We want to help. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, so you can call us at 949-497-2553, and that's where you can um, get the special and everything. So, um, that being said, I have one other fun thing to okay. do today. So, we had our Community Appreciation Day last week. It was super fun. We had a bunch of um, people in for the day. We um, did free B12 shots, free adjustments, and... Um, uh, therapy massage and we always we do this about three times a year we always raise money for local mm. charities I know my fish tuck is good huh mm. so this <laughs> year we were raising money for the Extraordinary Lives Foundation which um, a good friend and patient Mary James she is the founder of it it's amazing it helps support children's mental health um, wellness and awareness so we were raising money for them and as well as the Dominguez Roth Integrated Medical Foundation which looks to um, incorporate both conventional and alternative therapies for cancer care so um, and even provide health care for people who can't afford it mm -hmm, exactly so we raised money for both of those so everyone who donated got a raffle ticket so we have some really good raffle oh, good. prizes. The first one is from Roots Beauty. We love them. They do non-toxic um, cosmetics and beauty and everything. So they offer a girls' night out, which you can invite all your friends to, and you basically get to go and do mini facials and have a really cool night there. So um, I'm going to pick the winner for this one. Drum roll. Oh, yes. I think we're in a McGraw. Yeah. Nicole Warren McGraw. Nicole. Awesome. For you. There yes. You go. You're going to have fun. Perfect. So good. Should I write it on there? Do you have a pen? I will. I will remember. I'll All remember. Right. All right. Then we have a Project Juice, juice one day cleanse. So you get to go into Project Juice, get all your juices for the day, and do a cleanse. Super important to do cleanses. Our body needs to fast and kind of clean out. So who's the winner here? Drum roll. You want to pick it? Sure. Thank you. And this one is Priscilla Roach. Yes, Priscilla. All right. Girl, awesome. you always get the goods on these. All right. The next one is a one-hour session with Lori Kahn. She was there at our Community Appreciation Day, and she does lots of wonderful things. So you can actually choose if you want to do a neurofeedback session with her, a meditation session, or a mindful coaching. So that's going to be amazing. This one, Eric Jensen. Yay! Congratulations. All right. Want to pick the next? One? Okay, the next one is a 
skin tightening session with Dr. Anita Wang. So this is really great. It helps to decrease cellulite, helps to make the skin look nice and Can fresh and young. Can I buy a bunch young. of tickets real quick? Because <laughs> I need it. <laughs> All right, ready? Who's it going to be? Julia Bartholomew King. Yay, Julia, right. congratulations. And one more. This is from Health and Balance. You get to come in and get an IV and a foot bath. It's gonna be amazing. We do our Myers Easy Wellness IV with a detox foot bath. You get to look out at the ocean while you're getting it done. It's pretty relaxing and nice. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna be? Laurel Taylor! All right, I'm on Laurel. Yay. Awesome. All right, well, way to go, winners. Stoked for you. Thanks for joining us on Lunch with the Doc today. And um, hope your kids have an amazing year at school. Yep. Remember, you are amazing. amazing.